Tech Talk. Tech Talk number 105 is coming to us today. Let's get started here. Let's bring in the troops. Get a couple folks in here. Hey, Charlie. My man, number one, Charlie. David. Alan. Good to see and hear you guys get up in here. David. Robert. 105. That's right, man. Ricky Smith. Hey, Ricky. Look, I want to tell you guys, it's interesting. Hey, Ben. Steve Perry. Jack. Good evening. I'll call out a few names as we gather up our little group. Uh, how about the fact that this is beginning the first week of our third year, Jim? Jack, Ben, Ricky, y'all. First week of third year. I cannot hardly believe it. Hey, Jerry. How are you doing? Mrs. Stewin. Harold. Hey, Mr. Steve. <clears throat> Thank you all for checking in, clicking in. I got some good stuff to go over today. You might see some of the notes in the background where we can talk about a few cool ideas. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit bigger crowd in here. Steven, thank you. Hello, JC. How y'all? <clears throat> Tech Talk 105. 105. Tech Talk 105. Yeah, that's right. That doesn't seem like many does at 105, especially when you're talking about Milwaukee 8, a small one now is a 108, a 107, I'm sorry. 105, yeah, that's uh, weeks in a row. Six o'clock, hey, Dennis, Matt, Johnny, Chad, Imel, and Mr. Animal, Brett, Dennis, thank you all for clicking in. I wanted to talk to you about the interesting side of this. Hey, buddy, yep, we were just supercharging that story, weren't we? Hey, Scott. Lots of cool stuff to talk about. All right, I'm going to switch the camera over from 105 Tech Talk. And let's talk a little bit about things. Hey, Chongress, John, hey, y'all. Thanks for clicking in. Mark and Jamie. Man, how about Mark back there? Appreciate y'all. All right, I'm going to switch over. Michael. Hey, everybody. It's good to see y'all's face on here. <laughs> I don't see your face. You have to see mine. Yeah, I got an old shirt on. This is a Bryce Customs. That's when uh, back in the 2003, 4, 5, somewhere in that range when uh, the G squared G2 deal came along and uh, they wanted me to get rid of the name Star Racing and get rid of George Bryce. So me and Jackie decided we better build us a little something underneath all of that in case star racing went away while we were being G squared, but star racing was too strong. We lasted a lot longer. Um, hey, Lori, that's nice to see some really friendly names on here with smiles and, and little hearts and all kind of cool little stuff. I'm thankful for you guys. Hey, Daryl, I, um, it's, it's, a uh, 105 weeks in a row. I'm excited to be able to come on here and share, but i howdy kid. Shimer. I I know it's interesting that uh, back to the Bryce Customs that was we didn't know what we were going to be because the G squared thing that was George Smith from S and S and George Bryce from Star Racing went in and created a new company called uh, G squared Motorsports and it was George and George why well, it was G two and we came up with some cool ideas came up with some new engines got the racing team going for the for the NHRA S and S one sixty. Uh, pro stock engine that everybody's running out there now. It was all part of the history of that deal. Ricky and Ken, hey y'all, and Brad. Hey, but you know, things changed. 2008, 2009, that went a different direction. The S and S deal went a different direction, and we so we got Star Racing resurrected it back up out. It was only gone for a little while, and Star Racing, we stayed strong all the way through 2020, and now we build. Um, camshafts and for for late model Harleys and we sell parts cylinder head parts and stuff and that's just not the ad I'm gonna bring you today but hey Stefan Curtis Anthony so here's some hey Anthony how's it going man you pros out there racing out in the big show um, I'm gonna change over to the board and let's get technical here all right hey Roy 
and Mark Painter. How y'all doing? Flipping back over to the board. All right. A couple of things I wrote some notes on that I want to go over with you. Well, first of all, uh, but people ask, and they're going to want to ask, I have on my penguin socks today. Yep, penguins. I have lots of different socks, so in case y'all know, Brandon, Larry, Raymond, Joe. Wow, cool to see your names on here. All right. <clears throat> A couple things I wanted to tell you that, <clears throat> excuse me, People say that the engine is just an air pump. We've heard it. Yeah, it's just an air pump. And Roy, I see Roy on there. Roy, God bless you, man. I hope you and Rovanda are doing good. <clears throat> I want to tell you that thank you for all you taught me all the years. And um, I miss you, man. Roy, thank you. But they say the engine is just an air pump. Well, that's one way to put it. Yes, air goes in and it pumps it and it comes back out. But we do a lot more with it than just an air pump. And they also say there's no replacement for displacement. And that's got some arguments to it, too. And then big engines rule. Yeah, mountain motors and big cubic inches and all that kind of stuff. Also, I wanted to tell you that um, big engines, cubic inches sort of dictate how much torque an engine can produce. And... And I'm not talking about horsepower. I'm talking about torque because you and I, all of us on here, we will look and watch. We've seen 500 cubic inch engines make, engines make 400 horsepower. We've seen 500s make 700 horsepower. We've seen 500 cubic inches make 1,500 horsepower. And when you get up to 1,500 horsepower with a 500, you're talking about three, horse, three horsepower per cubic inch. Well, <clears throat> the torque number is what's really the common denominator because when you get around a hundred and uh, excuse me 1.5 foot pounds 1.5 pounds feet per inch that is a real deal right there because the peak torque is usually made on the left side of the dyno sheet and the peak horsepower is usually made on the right side of the dyno sheet i know we've talked about that a hundred times and we're not going to go there today but also found out that the one and a half foot pounds per cubic inch. And I've been saying horsepower per cubic inch for 30, 40 years. So if I mess up and say 1.5 horsepower per cubic inch, please listen to me. That's a mistake. I'm trying to say one and a half foot pounds per cubic inch. And we can just take our ARRP calculator for our old people and we can go in here and we can get a hundred cubic inch engine times 1.5 and that will give us 150 foot-pounds of torque, okay? That's at the flywheel. So when we have three dynos to work with, which we did last year, we had a DTS engine dyno, we had a Superflow engine dyno, and we had a dyno jet chassis dyno. What we learned there was there is some handicaps that the engine has to pull along. It's uh, the drivetrain, the transmission, the drive shaft, the chain, the sprockets, the wheel, the tire. So we had also a dyno to measure what the power output was to the tire. The dyno jet chassis dyno would tell us how much torque and horsepower the engine would put to the tire. We found out that along the way that it was around 13% or 16% loss. There were, there were um, parasites on there that would actually sap some of the power away. So if you had... Uh, I wrote down on the side over here, just for examples. If you had a pro stock motorcycle like Matt Smith, say for instance, where he has 340 horsepower at the tire, divided by 85% would give him 400 output. So the same engine, and not just calling out Matt Smith, but our pro stock engine, we had 400 on one dyno and we had 340 on the other dyno. So that gave us about 15%. Right now, everybody that watches knows about my, not everybody, but the people that notice, I have a, a CVO Road King. I'll move this a little closer. 2003 CVO Road King that has 180 horsepower at the tire. Divided by 85% would give me a net of 211 horsepower output to the flywheel output where that means if they had just this 
engine on the DTS engine dyno, I could get 211, but since I bolted it in the motorcycle, transmission clutch, chain, sprockets, rear tire, wheel, and all the parasites and all the stuff that it has to drag along behind it, you only get about 85% of the power. So we can convert that backwards. I took the pro stock engine dyno at 400 horsepower and only 85% of that actually goes to the tire, which equals 340. So you can do some math here, you guys. You can do it backwards or you can do it forwards. 400 times 85% equals 340 or 400 or 340 divided by 85 gives you 400. So you can do it forward and backwards. I also did cubic inches times uh, one and a half foot pounds per cubic inch buck. My CVO has a 129 engine in it, and it says it would have 193 foot pounds of torque on the engine dyno. Given the 85%, that gives me 164 foot pounds at the tire. Now, that 85% is a little bit questionable on that particular uh, combination, and I'll explain why in a minute. I also wrote down over here that the one and a half pounds feet per cubic inch is based on having eight cylinders because there are eight brothers and sisters turning the same crankshaft and they're all pulling in the same direction. And you guys that work on V8s will know some cylinders help more than others. Just like in our families, if you have a family with eight siblings, there is always the one that does the most and there's one brother or one sister that does the least, but they're still a V8 family. Hey Nick, hey Mark. Hey, Erwin, I just wanted to tell y'all this is all opinion, and I'm going to tell you back, back it down to the, to the G Georgia or country boy viewpoint, y'all. These are my opinions, not the Internet opinions, not the uh, engine builders of the year opinions, not the world record holder opinions, but just my opinions as generalized numbers that if you take notes, we can use to learn from and to compare. I like this one and a half pounds feet per inch as a general rule. When a guy tells you he's got an unbelievably or unheard of potential for his torque numbers are unbelievable. Normally aspirated on gasoline, y'all. Normally aspirated on gasoline. One and a half pounds feet per cubic inch to the flywheel with eight cylinders. And that's to the flywheel. So I put one and a half pounds feet per inch with eight cylinders at the flywheel. Now, what does that mean to a chassis dyno? Well, an eight cylinder on the chassis dyno, like a V8, Chevelle, 427, stick shift, you might be 13% loss through that whole drive, drive train. If it's got uh, a big heavy duty electronic transmission with overdrive, underdrive, lockup converter, and about three different ratios, and a ton of heavy parts. This thing might be 16% loss through the drivetrain. Hey, Daniel, Lauren, oh my gosh, I just described your family, and not, you're the one that does all the work. Oh my gosh, you should ask the other seven of the up people in your family, Laurie, and ask them if, they, if you're the one that does it. If they all agree, then that's cool, because see, if that's you, if you're the guy that does all the work in the family, that means that you need to turn the timing and the heat up on the other siblings, and then you need to get you a little drink with an umbrella in it and cool off. Hey, Ricky. Jamie, back to this story. My point about the eight cylinders, I want you guys to know that when you have eight cylinders and your crankshaft's turning and you have a firing, a firing stroke every 90 degrees, bang, 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 on the crank, it's got... 720 degrees to get the four strokes done, the intake, the compression, the power, and the exhaust. And you got a firing, a firing cylinder. One of the siblings on that crankshaft family is doing, helping, firing, 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 firing. Keeps that wheel going, makes a lot of smooth power. Now let's go back to just one cylinder, that guy, one guy, no brothers and sisters, one crankshaft, and it goes bang. And then the flywheel inertia has to squeeze it to compress it. Then, oh, I'm sorry, then bang. Then it goes to pushing the exhaust out. And then it has to use the flywheel inertia to draw some more intake in. And then it uses flywheel inertia to squeeze it and then light it and then bang. So it only has one guy helping. So it does not make the same torque per cubic inch 
as an eight cylinder. So that means a two cylinder makes less torque. And I'm not talking about a lot. It might be, uh, when you do this math over here, a single cylinder, you might have to do, it might only get 84% of the power output. And a V10 or V12 might do more than that. So these are just uh, things to consider when you're going to be so absolute about math. Math is great. Math is a good starting point. And that's why I'm saying this 13 to 16% has got such a range to it. And this has a range to it. I was just talking to a friend on the phone a minute ago, and he told me he knows of some engines that make 1.6 pounds-feet per cubic inch. Okay? Well... There are some, and I normally aspirated in gasoline powered. There's really, really good stuff around one and a half foot pounds per cubic inch. Now, diesels, turbocharged, nitrous oxide, oh my, nitrous oxide, and supercharged turbos, nitrous oxide, methanol, nitro, all those cool things, man. They make unbelievable amounts of torque per cubic inch. That's why it wants to blow the head off and blow the rings off. They want the head gaskets having a hard time keeping the family together. There, head tries to blow off, tries to break the head studs, tries to stretch the studs. Head gaskets spraying out everywhere. The rings are trying to blow off the pistons. So that's because it's making a lot more than your parts are designed for. One point five pounds per cubic pounds feet or foot pounds of torque per cubic inch is very very strong all right and i also wrote down here empirical data results somebody says well i don't know about the single cylinder results i don't know about the twin cylinder or the four cylinder results and given all the years with the dts engine dyno given all the years with the superflow engine dyno and given all the years with the dyno jet chassis dyno we did get to learn some of that stuff crossing over and our world our industry our hot rod harley industry is this is the only thing that matters right now the dyno jet chassis but the guy with an engine dyno that would really get after it like we did with the sns 160 or some of the other engines like our suzuki's when like vance and hines does vance and hines does a great job with that matt smith does a great job with that those guys are developing engines based on an engine dyno because they tune the engine. A chassis dyno, a lot of times, will have you're tuning the whole motorcycle. And when you only have a chassis dyno, you get great results if you test correctly. And the guys that are running pro stock right now with chassis dynos, most of them can't control the tire or the clutch, so therefore they get really poor data. Uh, it's hard to measure that stuff like you can with an engine dyno. And on our engine dynos where we ran just the engine, we would make sure nothing slipped and we got direct results and it tore up a lot of parts. And if you're running a, an eight cylinder on an engine dyno, it is like an electric motor so smooth. And I know an engine and a motor are two different things. Hey Bryce, hey David, Brenton, JJ, I just wanted to say hi. But having an electric motor style run where a V12, a V10 or a V8 are so smooth in power output and power delivery. But if you take that same dyno that can handle 2,000 horsepower like this DTS engine dyno and put a V-twin with 60 degrees odd fire where one cylinder fires 400 degrees and then 315 degrees later the other one fires and then 400, excuse me, 405 to the front, then 315 to the back, then 405, and it just keeps jank banging and jerking and banging and jerking and starting and stopping and starting and stopping a little baby 160 cubic inch v twin can tear one of these brutal dynos up if you don't dampen the engine it's really really hard to watch how bad one of those v twins would run on any one of these super flows or the dts engine dyno all right i'm putting some zero weight in the pipe hang on I have lube on them pipes, man. <clears throat> hey, Tim. Hey, Brian. Hey, Michael. So let's do a little bit ideas here. What's a really good known engine package right now? Uh, we, well, I'll try with my, with my um, what you call this thing. This is a AARP calculator. Let's try and get in close with this. Try 
try and make it show up on on this phone. All right, am I losing y'all? All right, let's take a Harley right now that's real popular. It's a 131. Okay, times 1.5 foot pounds per cubic inch. 196. That is a lot of torque. 131 times 1 1.5 equals 196. Okay, let's do 131. Since it's a V twin, let's try one, times 1 1.4. Times 1 1.4 foot pounds per cubic inch. Eh, still too much, 183. All right, let's take that 183 that you would see if it was tuned up right, had the right camshaft and it had all the right pipe and the right tuning and everything, and that would be at the flywheel. So let's do 183 divided by 85%. I did that backwards. 183 times 85% equals 155 foot-pounds. Now, that is a rear wheel foot pounds. We have all perused and checked and shopped around on the internet and we found 155 available on a 131. Yours might not have it. Screaming Eagle right out of the box might not have it, but there are people that are watching Tech Talk right now that post dyno sheets of a 131 Harley engine with 155 foot pounds of torque on the dyno sheet. Now that's also could be what we do is we, for pump gasoline, where you're going to drive around on the street, we do 1.2 horsepower per cubic inch on pump gas. That's 157 horsepower at the rear tire. So if we have 157 horsepower at the rear tire on a 131 Harley, and we divide that by 85%, <laughs> Let's see, 131 times 1 1.2 equals 157 horse at the rear tire divided by 85%. 184 horsepower at the flywheel. That same 131 engine has to make 185 horsepower at the flywheel in order to give you 157 or 158 at the tire. Does that make sense? Do you guys understand that? This is just basic things that we have learned over the years because we were fortunate enough to work with engine dynos and the chassis dyno, and we had all the same day. And the percentages, I read of them, heard of them a few times, but I gotta tell you what we found is when we got um, our school bikes that we ran for 23 years at Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, and they were Suzuki, two valve X old wore out pro stock engines that we detuned by running two exhaust cams on it to make sure that the valve springs would last and we could beat them to death for 38 runs a day, which is so brutal. Uh, run seven second motorcycles, 30 something runs. It was a heck of a time for you guys, eight or hundred of you that went to that school. You remember how cool that was. But what we found out was if it had 300 and five horse or so on the engine dyno, it would have 85% less on the dyno jet chassis dyno. And we, we just went and did it on the DTS dyno. We ran them. We put it on the Superflow dyno and we ran them. And then we took, put the engine in the bike and took them to the dyno jet chassis and ran them. And it proved to be somewhere to paint, to paint, to between 13 and 16%. Boy, that's easy for you to say. Don't even make me try and say that word again. Also, with our Pro Stock motorcycle that was going 670s last time we were racing, back in uh, the same time five years ago, running 670s, we were making 340 at the tire and 400 at the crank. Now, I want to go back to this first thing that I just left off when I started. That the camshaft is the brain's of the engine. I got to back up so you can get the whole statement in there. Camshaft is the brains of the engine. I'm going to explain to you why I say that. That 131 Harley engine or your 500 cubic inch uh, Chevrolet Chrysler Ford Oldsmobile Pontiac Motorcraft 
Mercury, whatever your 500 is. A 131 Harley, if you put a stock camshaft in it, it's going to make less than one horsepower per cubic inch. If you put a what Harley's torque cam in it, it's going to make about 20 more horsepower. And if you put a better cam in it, it's going to make more horsepower because the engine is still going to be 131 cubic inches. The engine is dictated. There's no displacement, no re replacement for displacement. Big engines rule. The engine is just an air pump. One and a half foot pounds per cubic inch. Now, go back to that 131. What's cool about that 131 is it's going to make that much torque if you do everything right. But this number of how much horsepower per cubic inch it's going to make is hugely controlled by how much air moves in and out of the engine. The torque is whatever the torque number is measured on this dyno, engine dyno, let's say whatever it has, times RPM divided by 5252 equals the horsepower at whatever RPM you check it out. And I know I've said that a thousand times, but the camshaft is the brains of the engine. It tells the engine whether it's a race engine, it's a street engine, or it's a touring engine, or you're just going to make a air compressor engine or a generator engine or a stationary power plant or whatever. The, the camshaft tells the engine that. You can take the same engine, and I had the guys at um, GRC, at a Garden Racing Concepts. They had a crate engine, a 131 Harley crate engine, and I sent them three camshafts, and I said, dyno this, en this, this engine, please, for me. And I paid them to do an independent study for me, and my goal was is to see what this would look like. And I'm going to draw a rough result right here, because this is not exactly how it looked, but I'm going to attempt to draw this while you're looking live. The engine made this much power. And with the 3030 cam, it made this much power. And with the full race cam, it made this much power. Over here, a 3030, over here, the 3030 cam was the all star. But he also, when we got past 5,200, 5, he fell off a little bit because it was a 131 and it wasn't quite enough cam for an engine that big. But the full race, absolutely loved the RPM. So it took the 30-30, the 3-quarter, the three and let me get over here where you can see. The 30-30, the 3-quarter, and the full race change the characteristics and the personality of the engine. As a matter of fact, it creates the personality of the engine. The small, medium, and large. Excuse me. The, the small, medium, and large. The small, medium, and large. I'm going to have to put this where I can see my finger. The small cam, the medium cam, and the large cam worked this side of 5200. Over this side of 5200 RPM, the large cam was lower the medium cam was the middle, and the little cam was the biggest. That's the personality and the brains of the engine. Okay, my time is up. I made it. We lived through it all, y'all. Mark, Bill, I want to tell y'all, Tech Talk number 105 is in the books. May God bless y'all. Thank you for watching. Jackie is going to keep this recorded version so that we can put it on our YouTube channel. It is Star Race uh, GA. I think it's Star Racing GA. Star Racing GA. I think that's my YouTube channel. And I look, it's a lot to absorb. Yes, it is, Johnny, Stephen, Walter. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you all clicking in. And uh, may God bless you all. And hey, and come back next week. And let's be getting into the third year of Tech Talk every Tuesday at 6 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Thank you all. And again, I really appreciate you guys.